Hey, everybody. <laughs> you guys, I have a question for you today that I'm self-conscious about. <laughs> okay, okay. Because it's my favorite question to ask and no one ever gets it. Okay. Oh, wow. So you're going to have to really... <laughs> why, wait, boss. <laughs> why is it then your favorite question to ask? Because if you do get it, it's really fun to hear the answer. I'm so Got nervous because I don't really want to make you feel bad. I'm really preparing myself to like fully <laughs> It won't make this. me feel bad. I'll feel bad? I will feel bad feelings toward you. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so you won't feel bad. Dang, okay. just, that's I'm, even I'm worse. Very, <laughs> we've all been there, though. It's okay. Anxious about this. Felt bad feelings toward You've her. had bad feelings towards all of us, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. <laughs> <laughs> True job. <Josh. laughs> okay, so here's the question. Okay. <laughs> and then you guys are gonna be like, how do people not get this? But I swear it happens all the time. Um Hopefully if, that's our reaction. If you were a coffee drink, what coffee drink would your personality be? Huh. Which is different than right. the question, what's, what's your, your favorite, favorite coffee, coffee drink? Yes. Which is how people wow. always answer it. But like, uh -huh. you may not even actually like I, the coffee <laughs> drink that most represents <laughs> your personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I literally just thought I would, I'm just going to say what I get. And so yeah, I'm and you can't do that. Okay, else. okay, okay. <laughs> so you didn't get it. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> um, I think mine has to be super flavorful. <laughs> because my personality is just... Just great. Packed with, just flavor. Just packed with flavor. Mm. That's true. Um, what flavors? Uh, well, that's what I'm trying to discern right now, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom. <laughs> um, let's see. I would say, you know, you know the hot chocolate that Woods gives you, chocolate. where they put those, where they put the whipped cream on top of the lid with sprinkles. <laughs> you mean the kids' hot chocolate? <laughs> Like the ones I get for my kid after they go to the doctor? Yes. Oh my God. They make the whipped cream with marshmallow syrup. Yeah, yes. That's that the one, one that would represent my I personality think that's best. True. Like, that kind of, that kind of, up. like, you are wearing simple, a shirt with but cereal on it right now. Fun. That says good morning. Yeah. I yeah. Do love that no, yeah. but then can you explain why you think that's you? Because it's like, what's a couple words? I think it's um, fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and colorful and bubbly. Yeah. And uh, let's see. But also, <laughs> hot, hot chocolate is soothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. That is true of you. Thank you. Way to answer Thank the you question, for letting Josh. me just compliment myself <laughs> yeah, I was gonna the say, whole time. Really just some self affirmation there. I respect <laughs> it. I respect it. Yeah. No, that was great. That was an awesome answer. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I think I would be maybe like an Americano because it's like bold and mm -hmm. like strong. Mm -hmm. But yet watered down. But yeah, yeah, but but with some cream <laughs> in it because I'm also like kind of basic, you know, just like add some cream just because like sometimes just I just like basic? to be run of the mill and like. I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> totally. I would not ever call you basic, but like um, conforming to like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just get to work. Give yourself worse things. I'm just trying to bail you out. I'm just saying what's true. Like I think sometimes I have these strengths, but sometimes I have these qualities that are like not as good. Where I like conform and kind of like I'm like basic, you know. And like <laughs> so, I think then maybe maybe that'd be oat milk because maybe that's Pumpkin more like yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> What kind of flavoring would you get in this Americano? Um, Any at all? Um, this is where I'm tempted to say something because that's what I would order if it was my drink. You can't. But maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> not. I'll say, can, I'll say what what flavor maybe okay. you would have. Uh -huh. um, white chocolate, but the powdered kind. Oh. Because that's the good stuff. There's that's a powdered nice. kind? Yeah, instead of like syrup white mm -hmm. chocolate, it's like a powdered white chocolate that gets <laughs> that gets like fully integrated when you stir gotcha. it. Gotcha. <laughs> Can you and explain Molly, why like, Molly is more of the powdered kind than the syrup kind of white chocolate? Because she's like, it's like more um, authentic. Like it's I not this see. syrupy like I, I, sweet yeah. thing. It's I, like I true that. white chocolate. And that feels like Molly where Thank she's you. like wow. more the real deal. Yeah, Thank the you. real. Yeah. With some, a little sprinkle of conformity in there. <laughs> Oh, just, just being just, real, just being just being real. Yeah, so yeah. powdered white chocolate americano with like a little bit of oat cream milk, maybe or cream or oat milk yeah. okay all right which i'm gonna be honest that's like 
<laughs> what exactly I ordered. What you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> An Americano with white chocolate and cream. But like, I don't know. <laughs> I still think it fits. Yeah, it's yeah, good. It definitely does. Um, I would say I would be and I, I have kind of two ideas. So like I would be just a, a dopio espresso. Isn't that what you order? No, not most like well it depends on the Come time yes. of day. It is a dopio espresso, like a nice dopio espresso from but not from like Starbucks or one of those. It's like it has to be from like a coffee shop where the baristas definitely listen to music that you don't know. And <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's like everything I hate. Oh, I know. Anyway, so something like that and, um, or like a like a, a pour over coffee and here's why. It's very functional. It is, it is, it is, uh, it energizes you to accomplish things, mm. but yet it is also like, um, there's some refinement in it if you know mm. how to look for like look oh, for it yes oh that was a great answer. that was really a great answer to be clear i don't order the kids hot chocolate <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to make that known it's okay if you do <laughs> nothing wrong with that absolutely not they're really good at woods especially with the little the little marshmallow oh, the little marshmallow no. cream <laughs> i'm trying to yeah because that's definitely what garrett would order is a pour over or a w yeah for sure so but it's because but he okay. feels it in his soul. Maybe. Yeah, it, you're not saying that it can't be the same thing. You're just saying that's not. It may not be. Right. Yeah. And that's not the point. Well, of the originally, yeah. I was going to like be like, I'm kind of brown and kind of white. Like maybe I'm a blended drink or something. But that was like, that felt too. Kind honest. of a cop out. Yeah. Totally. yeah. So I, I, went with, I, I took like a little bit more. Yeah. No, yours was great. I'm going to use that as the example of like someone who answered it well. Mm. Okay. What about you, Ken? Um, I think I would be. What are those called where it's like um, a couple of shots and then whipped cream? A uh, campana. Yeah, campana. I think that that's what I would be because similarly to the Americano comment mm -hmm. of like it's bold. It's like it's it is what it is. Like it's pretty straight up and kind of exciting and kind of like. Woo, you know, yeah. the, the espresso part, <laughs> <laughs> but with like some fluffy sweetness on top. Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> That's fabulous. For That's sure. perfect. Did you There's ask this like question just to set layers. up your own answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's her favorite question. So obviously she's, she thought thought she's thought about it. I've just thought about it before. Yeah. You knew that answer the, the whole time. Yeah, I did, but I've actually said the why differently before, but I've kind of understand myself more. more so it's more. really a No, that's good. What a yeah. journey we've been When on. I worked in coffee, my drink, especially when I opened the coffee shop, was a campana, two shots. With whipped cream? With whipped cream. This was before like, I realized dairy made me want to die. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never had it before, so okay. that's how it's authentic drink, the answer is. Yeah. Okay. Not sure. only is it not my favorite, <laughs> never, never even, had, never even it. had it <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks you thanks you guys. Hey, did thanks. we did we did we meet your expectations yeah. on it? That was pretty you good. You guys exceeded my oh. expectations. That's all I want on to hear. how much you tried to understand oh, the heart of the question. Just want to guys did a great job. Achieve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I would maybe give you guys different answers. So maybe I'll say that next podcast. Okay. I'll say what I think that you are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have I have a a book idea for you. You should just do Enneagram but coffee. That's already an Instagram feed. Enneagram and coffee. Enneagram but coffee. What does that mean? Just like. And s <laughs> you assign a coffee each number. What? And then you just you assign use that. Coffee each that number? sounds like an infographic. <laughs> 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 I don't know if that's it's a just book. Just one. <laughs> it's just one. just <laughs> one. You just like give each, each kind of coffee a number that you think most aligns with it on an Enneagram. And then you write a book about how... How but why? That, why? Yeah, yeah okay. and you explain it. You guys pretty much give me a book idea of something to write about every single podcast. Someone gives me a book idea. So we'll be your publishers. Uh, so I appreciate that. Yeah. You're welcome. Or your brain trust. Which is also funny you say that because the other question I was considering asking you guys is if you could be any other Enneagram number, which one you would pick. But that mm -hmm. just doesn't feel like a good question to ask. So. But then one day you're going to ask. I definitely it have I'm, an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so curious. Maybe that will be next, next time. Next time. Next yeah, time. next time. Anyway, because what we are going to talk about today <laughs> is something totally different. Something <laughs> super fun, <laughs> which is purity culture. 
Um, <laughs> Toxic sexual dun, dun, dun. church cultures. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I couldn't really think of a question to go with it. That would like be more <laughs> fun. Yeah, that would be. That could be a recipe for disaster. So unrelated, but we're going to talk about purity culture. Um, and we want to talk about it in a fairly specific way in that um, obviously there are a lot of unhealthy damaging things about purity culture mm. that we want to kind of talk about and, and deconstruct and just process together. But what we've noticed is that we kind of feel like a lot of people stop there and we'll kind of deconstruct purity culture in the way that that has um, damaged people within the church, but then don't really give away through that and a way out of that. And yeah. so we're going to do a lot of that actually in our next episode, yep. um, but hopefully a little bit, some tidbits of that here and there in this episode sure. also. Love it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Cool. So I think it may be helpful to just begin like we often do with just defining what is purity culture. It's mm. kind of this like term mm. that I think we've all heard. We all like have ideas around it, Yeah. but what is purity culture? Mm. Yeah. I, I think I would, I'll start. Um, cause I grew up in a spot where purity culture had some pretty significant like roots. So I grew up in Denver, Colorado area. So one of the first, like, I think probably the, the most defining book that kind of put the boundaries around what created at least purity culture in the probably mid early to mid nineties up through. Um, was a book called I Kissed Dating Goodbye. Um, it was, uh, I, yeah, anyway, it, it was, and he was, the guy that, the guy that wrote it, uh, that lived about an hour from where I grew up. And then um, down in Colorado Springs was a bunch of uh, publishers and organiz like parachurch organizations that did a lot with propping up um, a purity culture, like in, in churches. And so here's our, mm -hmm. at least I would say it. Purity culture was a, a, a culture set up by churches um, as a means to try, uh, if I could think, I'm going to assume positive intent, <laughs> to help like teens, young adults, try to figure out how to deal with their sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and then they did it with... Um, like I said, best intentions, but essentially um, they created an entire set of um, practices and norms that churches would go through in order to establish like um, a way of operating or a liturgy or a, um, a set of relation, like defining relationships um, all around ensuring no one has sex until they get married. Mm -hmm. So what were the practices, um, sermons, youth group messages, mm -hmm. conferences that would stop people from having sex? Yes. Yep. Yep. And so they created this whole culture to, to simply do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a big element of my experience in purity culture and my understanding of it is that it was about not doing this thing. Yes. And it was just like, and everything kind of fell underneath that umbrella. And so it was, especially for women, I mean, I can I can speak from my experience. It was, you don't have a sexual, like you don't have sexuality. You like, yeah. you don't, you are an object of, mm -hmm. of temptation. Mm -hmm. um, and so don't think about sex, like dress appropriately so as to not like, cause temptation right. in men um it was like yep. don't talk about it like almost just kind of pretend it like sexuality and sexual desire doesn't exist that wasn't that wasn't the message that was communicated overtly um like I wasn't told to not think about it but it was right. the lack of dialogue and conversation around sexuality was that was the message that I interpreted was um, it's sort of like just pretend it doesn't exist and you'll figure it out when you're married. Yeah. Um, right. Which is really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. So it was a lot yes. of like the absence of having sex. Right. But without anything 
in in place of that or yes. without like an education or, or a dialogue around right. how to navigate it in the meantime. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also I think with the promise that if you don't have sex until you're married, that it's going to be this absolutely incredible experience. Like I think that purity culture kind of creates this dichotomy around sex where it's like unmarried sex equals bad, horrible, evil, right. dirty, and married sex yeah. equals euphoric yes the most intimate thing you've ever experienced in your life and i think part of why purity culture ha- creates both shame and rebellion on both sides of that spectrum too is because that doesn't fully ring true yes like there are people then who live within purity culture who have a sexual experience yes. and there is some pleasure right. in it yes. and they're unmarried. Yes. And yes. so they're like, well, this isn't true. Kind yeah. of screw this, yeah. you know, right. or the other way around, like that they're not having sex and they're yes. feeling all kinds of things. And yes. so I think an important right. element of purity culture is that it's like, it basically elevates sex to this, like all important thing. Yes. Whether you're having it or not, like it just creates a whole, um, yep. Yeah, I mean, a whole culture yes. around well, just sex, yes. which is wild. And ironically, in an attempt to mitigate people having sex, it created an I- idol mm, out of sex. Yes. Mm. Uh, right, and it, and right. It, and it made sex this thing that is to be achieved when you're with someone, which also elevated marriage mm-hmm. in the extent to mm-hmm. if you're single, then there's something like you're missing out on sex and that experience because uh, because we tell you, wait, 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 and then you'll get the prize, yes. basically. But if you're single and you don't get married, uh, then you just naturally feel like, well, then like I'll just never be able to experience that or, yeah. or I'm missing out or there's something mm-hmm. wrong with me. Right. Uh, and, that, and that they're experiencing a greater level of humanity yes. than I am. Yeah, so that's, I, I think that that's the, something I wanted to just, like I'm, I'm trying to get my head around. Some of the things you're saying is that what we're saying by purity culture is in order to create a world or a, uh, like a world or a, a church system or a, a, a pocket of, of like Christian goodness or something, then they started using a bunch of tactics to get the end that they wanted. They started with the end. Let's make sure Mm -hmm. that our youth group kids don't have sex. And then they created tactics to make that happen. One of which was leveraging shame to ensure that people's behaviors modified. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. This, other, and then they came up with other ones as well. They said, they said, okay, in order to make sure that you, another tactic in, in purity culture was to say sex was so incredible right. inside the right context. It was better than any sex that you, you could have outside of that. Mm-hmm. Right. But it was so dirty mm-hmm. in the right. wrong context that it damaged you completely. Right. So I, I remember, I remember this one. I, I can't remember her. I heard one, some, one person talk about it. They're like, sex is, sex is so dirty and gross and awful. And that's why you save it for someone that you love. Right. Yes. You know, like, like that was that kind of vision of, 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 of what it, what it was. So there's, there's all these kinds of, uh, there was, and then mm-hmm. I think we can talk about, I don't know if we will have a lot of time to talk about this idea, but also it was based in, in they would then also start leveraging tactics around what women are supposed to be and what men are supposed to be in order to get them to the outcome of not having sex. Yes. You know, so, and, and so then they would create other things too. They would create, um, uh, whole conferences that would be and instead of saying i'm going to like like i'm going to lose my virginity i'm going to pledge my virginity yes right so you would have purity cultures purity cards purity rings purity balls all sort <laughs> yeah, of purity balls was a new idea to me yes. until you said that that was a thing yeah so Not like a that. purity ball was like you would go as like a teenager to this thing at your church and you would say, I'm not going to have sex and I'm going <laughs> to sign a card and I am going to get a ring. Like your parents would buy you a purity ring and you would wear it. And typically the wild part was like, typically your date was your dad. Like, and, and this was all out of the, like out of the, 
the I Kiss Dating Goodbye mo- movement, which was like, I don't date, I only court. Like, oh my, yeah, yeah, it was wild. It was a wild oh. time. It, like, it That's was a, a podcast for another time. I'm about to say about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, like where you don't like ever put yourself ever in a situation where maybe the sexy times happen, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Right, so, right. so yeah. that whole system and structure is purity culture. Yep. Yeah, I think that's helpful too, G, and even just to put the word tactics around it because we're not saying that there's no merit to this idea that covenantal marriage yep. is the correct context for sex. Yes. Like, that, we believe that that's true, um, but it's the tactics that were used to try to convince people or hold people to that in a behavior sense yes. as opposed to... Um, really communicating a compelling case for why you would want that. Yes. Yes. That's, that's been become kind of the problem yes. is, are those tactics that you're saying? Yes. Yep. And I think some of it too had to, had to do with like an elevation of like the nuclear family. Like there was all, there's a lot of right. inner, like if right. you, if you guys want to read a really fascinating, like kind of, history that traces some purity culture stuff in it read jesus and john wayne by Kristen du voice i think her name is i'll, I'll put it in the show notes I'll, I'll for sure put it there um and she traces a, a, a huge thread about mm. uh the history of purity culture and all of that and so if you're looking for more of that that's the type of person you mm. are that you should mm. definitely read it i think that's also helpful when we think about like kind of this rejection of purity culture is that I think sometimes it can feel like when when we're rejecting this idea of purity culture that we're also rejecting with it what you're saying, Ken, right. which is like this Christian sexual ethic. And they don't have to go, they don't have to be one and the same. That right. we're right. saying we can reject this way and this system and this culture that has been corrupted without completely throwing out everything that we believe scripture says about yes. sexuality and right. that, yes. that I think it's important as we're having this conversation to actually acknowledge that those are separate because yeah. 100% like these tactics and the shame and the this narrative around sexuality and our bodies being bad and 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 all this stuff like it's not healthy and it's yes. it's it has caused I know a lot of hurt in people and a lot of trauma and it takes a lot of intentionality to undo some of that work but I think with that like there's there's room for nuance yep. and there's room to kind of yeah. separate some of those ideas. Well, and because what it did was it was, a, it was, <clears throat> it was trying to claim that this was uh, the Christian vision of sexual integrity. Yes. Yeah. And it claimed that to an extent yeah. where people latched on to, well, that's just what scripture must say. Then. Right. So how can we blame people so how for can we, conflating those? Yes. Right. Uh, because right. that's just what, what that's just must be what God desires for people Mm -hmm. and so when we confront purity culture we often go well if that's what god's about then see ya like i'm out of here i don't want to be a part of that and i think that's super important molly and i think the other thing i want to say about purity culture is uh is that there's it it also uh specifically um narrows down gender roles Mm -hmm. very specifically to uh how women are supposed to uh, interact with their sexuality, how men are supposed to interact with their sexuality. And it didn't do either, uh, well, like it didn't treat either sex well, because women were told essentially that, that your sexuality needs to be hidden. Like you, your body is bad. Your body is evil and you are to blame Mm -hmm. often for the stumbling of men. And men were told their minds are evil mm-hmm. and that their their thoughts are evil and they can't help themselves yes. but be this way because you're just are created that way. Right. And and this might sound like a purity culture might sound like this theory that like, oh, that happened like in the early two thousands and stuff, but like I have conversations mm-hmm. all the time still that are directly coming from the from purity culture that directly result from purity culture. Uh, and it, I mean, I remember going to, I don't know if you guys remember things, but I remember going to like Christian camps and dudes would like make sketches about how women need to not like make them stumble. Yes. Like, and sing songs about it and make jokes about it. And like, (laughs) just like they, I mean, our youth leaders 
reinforced that. Yeah. Like yeah, I remember right. that being reinforced by like, you guys do your best to avoid temptation and don't go after women who do expose themselves too much right. because they're just like, they're not pure women, right. for example. Right. And that's, that was all in all right. in it too. And honestly still is a lot and a we lot, still yeah. encounter it. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I, I went to a Christian college and um, there was a, a modesty fashion show put on by a, a student, actually a really dear friend of mine. Like they are really, really wonderful pe- person. But I mean, she comes out of this culture. Yeah. And that's what I mean by a right. culture right. is that right. it's that these people, like a lot of times these were done with the best intentions yes. by really wonderful people. Yes. So I want to say that yeah. clearly. And it was this whole thing. Like, like women need to dress a certain way. Otherwise it, it creates like, one, it puts way uh, puts all the pressure on women mm-hmm. for for any sort of 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 sexual integrity mm-hmm. because men and it paints a really low picture of men. It does. Men are just a like hormonal sex crazed monster, yeah. and they can't do anything about it. Yep. And so we need to um, eliminate all of that. So it creates a it gives it gives men a vision of themselves. That is so crappy. Yes. Yeah. Which then that vision of themselves is projected onto women Women. who then take the brunt of the consequences Consequences. of that. And we're talking about pretty caricatured versions Versions. of this. But the the truth is that this has um, very insidious consequences that are not just true in like youth group camps. Purity culture has created a way of operating where um men won't be in a car alone with a woman right that woman's married they're married and they won't be in a car alone and i know that's a controversial thing but but or for instance like they're um i once was talking to um my husband and i were talking both to a man um and he literally would not look at me yeah he would not look at me when i was speaking he didn't look at me which I had never experienced that to that extent before how awkward that is. Yes. I mean, just like in a, well, that's wild. in like a social way, that's super awkward to be talking and for someone to be looking at the person next to you or yes. down or anywhere they could besides at you. And it was so noticeable. And so when mm. we walked away, I said to my husband, I was like, that was so weird. Right. And he was like, I know exactly what he was thinking because yeah. I grew up in this cult, this church culture where he was like, he probably, you know, thinks you're pretty. And so in his head, he's like, I need to shut that off. I cannot look at her. But what the effect that has on me is that I feel like crap. Yes. And I Mm. feel completely disrespected. And I feel like everything I was saying, like, I was like, I better hurry up and finish this conversation. And I was talking about like a sermon, you know? And so it's just things like that, where it has really insidious consequences that teach women beyond just, um, in like these youth group settings or in a way of how they dress, but just, it has an effect on women's psyche yes deeply yeah and i was I, that was gonna be the the, the next I, I appreciate that like it's women bear all of the responsibility mm-hmm. and the shame and the consequence for any sexual indiscretion right right, right. And, and which is it just puts um uh an unfair and like unbearable burden mm-hmm. on women yeah. mm-hmm. right. well and then what it does in the mind of men is by trying not to see women as sexual objects, they're only seeing women, women as sexual, sexual objects. objects. Exactly. Because right. by going, oh, I can't think of this, I can't think of that, I can't exactly. think of that. Exactly. Right. Then all you're doing is treating them yeah. as a sexual object mm-hmm. because... Yes. Yeah. And that's how it feels. Yes, yes. you're not actually mm-hmm. seeing their dignity. You're not actually seeing their humanity. Uh, you're just going, nope, got to shut them off mm-hmm. because they're a sexual object that tempts me. Mm-hmm. And... and, yeah. and, and I am not kidding. Men were men are taught to do this. Yes. It is not like right. is it, that's why it's a culture. Yeah, that's why right. it's a culture. Right. Learned, mm-hmm. and it's not done with insidious intent. Mm-hmm. It is done with with like we need to help men avoid being corrupted. But it's a totally poor view of what the Bible says about who men are, mm-hmm. who women are, how we are supposed to interact with one another, uh, and how God sees us. And it's start. It's a starting point. Yes, that actually like isn't 
ultimately about God at all. Yeah. Like it actually, when you go into it more and more, you realize that a lot of purity culture um, was just done in an attempt to destroy the boogeyman of sex. Yeah. Mm. And in reality, it didn't do anything for people's relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and large point wasn't about that. It was about they need to be more Christian. Yes. They need to look more Christian. Right. Uh, and Christians don't have sex. And Christians don't have sex, so they need to yeah. not do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing, and I don't know, I'll, I, maybe I'll ask, I, this is the other thing that in my experience of at least the version of purity, purity culture that I was in, was then also there was still a double standard that if a dude had a bunch of sex before, it was like part of his testimony. Mm. And it was like, look what I gave up mm. to become yeah. a Christian. Mm. If a woman did it, had a bunch of sex before, it's like she was mm. gross, disgusting, mm. like dirty, dirty, mm-hmm. filled with shame. Mm-hmm. That was such a like, and, yeah. and there was a different, so like for a, for a guy, like the fact that they, it was like a moment of conquering and overcoming, mm. but for a woman, it, for, for women in the, in, in this, in this culture, it was like, there was something now cause they lost their purity. Right. Right. Yeah. Which goes yeah. in like, they lost the thing that they weren't supposed to give an, be given away. And that has old, yeah. old ancient history uh, right. in, in patriarchy and anyway, but yes. I don't know. I, so that was the other thing that I yeah. noticed, but obviously I didn't experience that. So I think that's something that I'm curious I think that's about. Super true. I think that's similar to around the idea of pornography yeah. is like, it, it's just like, there's just so much assumption. Like we're all saying that like, that men just will struggle with sexual temptation and lust yeah. and that it's like, it's assumed. And then it's almost like, okay, right. because it's like, it's just you will and like it'll be hard and you can get through it but then for women it's like you sh- you shouldn't yes and if you do it's like mm. it's just so much more shameful but it's it's just so interesting yeah i think it it's across the board there's like an the same goal for for that i think if you were to ask the purity culture movement like the same goal is for both people like don't have sex before marriage. Right. However, it's just executed so differently that it actually mm-hmm. doesn't seem like that's the same goal. Right. Um, and so it, it just, there's just such an accepted um, like lane for men right. to express sexuality, even though there's not really, but there is. And then for women, it's like yeah. to the other extreme of like no, no expression of sexuality. Right is okay and we're going to shame like any yeah effort to like figure right. out how to process that right. but yeah i think that's true and just kind of across the board right yeah right. and both of those things are damaging like yes. it is damaging yes. to men to say like you are a primarily sexual creature yeah. and so to subdue that in any way is going to take this like unreal force right. yes. to be able yeah. to do that yep. that is um really damaging yes. and really unfair and really enslaving yep. yes yep and 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 it's still uh i mean it's it has seeped into every small group i've ever seen <laughs> that yeah. men are a part of yeah. like right. yeah and it still is like right. uh it's why the main accountability question that men talk about largely the only accountability question they talk about is, did you watch porn? Mm -hmm. Like, did you, did you look at a woman in like with impure intent? Like, uh, did you do something like that? Like, like, and I've experienced in the sense of like, when I was like, I've, when I've dated people, the one of the main questions they would ask is just about my physical intimacy and boundaries and making sure that I'm not stumbling. And I get and, and again, the intent there yeah. is I want to support my friend mm-hmm. and I want to support one another so that we can like, uh, like try to be more godly, yeah. really. But what it's actually doing is it's defining sex as the main attribute of your relationship with God. Right. And it's saying like, if you participate in this, 
you're far from God and you're not following him. And if you don't participate in this, yes. then you're all good, even yeah, though you right. might not at all. Right. Uh, right. And, and it's still, it's still like that. And it's like, we don't talk about greed. Mm. We don't talk about uh, like, like how much we're, serving the poor like we don't talk about things that jesus talks about all the time it's often just that conversation uh and then it's like all right well i asked them the question i think they're doing good now (laughs) you know they're following jesus yes they uh they did not go past first base we're fine (laughs) rather than asking how are you treating your girlfriend yes right like i'm like seriously like Rather than what asking, was your last fight about? Yes. How yeah. did you communicate in that? Mm-hmm. Like, were you kind? Were yes. you listening? Yes. Were you humble? Yes. Like, yes. These questions aren't asked very, like, rarely asked in many conversations, yes. small groups that I've been in mm-hmm. with men. And it's not, again, it's not to shame anyone who's yep. doing that or to make you feel like that's like you're a bad person or like that that's wrong. It's it's the evidence of the culture gripping on to uh, cultures of men or, or groups of men within the church. Yeah, and I would say that that would be another element of what I, at least I saw in purity culture that it actually another version of how it's damaged, how we talk about sex as Christians mm-hmm. is it took mm-hmm. essentially a broadly pagan understanding of sexuality and then just took it at its face value and said, that's what God thinks about sex. That's what Christians think about sex. That sex is purely a physical act that is for pleasure um, to have fun in. And um, you need to have it be fun in its proper context and it's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. And um, if you can just wait. And so I remember as a youth pastor, I would have like 17 year olds coming up to me like, we need to get married. And I'm like, say what? Oh yeah. You know, yeah. And they're like, well, we want to have sex. So we need to get married. I'm like, yo, <laughs> there's so much. <laughs> let's, <with that. laughs> let's take a big room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like let's like, Right, so it, it was it was just a, a a wild thing that marriage became the yeah. the thing uh, that allowed you to have sex. Right. So you get people running towards it. Yeah. In order to because yeah. they're not because like we can't control ourselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we should lock ourselves into a lifelong, like <laughs> monogamous <Covenant>. fidelity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that reflects God's love with His people to the entire world. Like that seems the logical conclusion. But that, but that's what you, what happens when we don't allow for um, the container, which is the thing that God can, cares more about. Marriage itself. Yeah. What does marriage do, and how sex fits as a an element inside of marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think and I think that it also did something where it made sex purely um, in purity culture, made sex purely about physicality, that there was no talk about intimacy mm-hmm. or 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 other elements that yeah. actually are, are part of sex. I mean like we we had we had this conversation the other day. If you just like ask any like Sorry if you were ever in a frat, but like this is where my head goes. So (laughs) sorry to like put you on blast, but I just let me just like talk like stereotypical things that I I feel so like Garrett. I know. I I know. Well, (laughs) to also to be fair, like I when I lived in Boulder, Colorado, I lived right off of Frat Row, and I have a a grudge to pick with frats because they would keep me awake at night. Um, like personal. <laughs> sorry, I should probably see a therapist. <laughs> but like, let's say, like, so, like, you're like, why, like, you meet a, 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 like, you meet a guy in a frat, and they're just like, yo, like, I just want to have sex. And if you could say why they want to have sex, like, if you could ask them why do you want to have sex, they would probably say, well, it's a lot of fun. Okay. But there was also be undoubtedly a set of motivations underneath that. There could be like 
unhelpful cultural ones around conquering, but also there's going to be a version of like someone desires me, which is not a physical thing. That's an emotional thing. Right. I feel desired. Now, do, do they even know any of that's happening under the surface? Absolutely not. But when we make sex just about naughty bits banging together, then... <laughs> what well, description? Why, well, I don't know how to... <laughs> but when it's just that, like it's like with the Bloodhound game, it's like we ain't nothing but mammals. Let's do it like they do it on the, yeah. on the Discovery yeah. Channel. Like if it's just about that, all the unnamed yeah. motivations that are below that or in the midst of all of that are not named, but they are very much yeah. so in play. Mm -hmm. you know so that all of a sudden if you, it's just about not doing the thing mm -hmm. and then all the other components that are also involved in sex aren't part of the conversation and that's really important for i don't know healthy relationships you know <laughs> yeah totally so so i guess I, sorry i, I want to ask a question out of that now so as we've like just talked about all of this version of, of, of purity culture, like one thing that I've noticed then is that then in order to do all of that, they created these mechanisms, like purity culture created these mechanisms to, to, to not ha make sure people that didn't have sex, but then they also had to talk about God in a way mm. that reinforced the mechanisms. Mm. So what does this then communicate, this culture communicate about who God is? Mm -hmm. um, because I think it then yeah. shows yeah. us a version of God that I think is really up for grabs. Hmm. I think a couple of things come to my mind. The first is that um, God cares like the most about just our our behavior as far as our sexuality goes yeah. and also that like that god is um like withholds goodness from yeah. us and i think about those two things as far as like okay if if purity wow. culture is all about me just not having sex until i'm married and it's totally awesome and totally great and then it's totally great then without this marriage which is not guaranteed to me like it's not a promise like Mm -hmm. it's not, not everyone gets ride. married yeah. Yeah. like believe it or not i know <laughs> which i think is a whole nother thing that mm -hmm. we kind we need, of need to talk about yeah that is a part of it is that mm -hmm. we just kind of sort of assume that marriage is a guarantee that we're all um like we all have a right to but um yeah so if if sex is is not allowed <laughs> until i'm married and then it's awesome and this isn't a right then there's something that God is withholding from me that is good that I may or may not ever be able to experience in my life as far as this Christian narrative goes. Yes. Um, and that is, is frustrating. If that is true about God, that's frustrating. And that is, um, that means that there is goodness that I cannot access based on my position in life that God is withholding from yes. me. Um, Some profound yes. ultimate experience yes. of humanity. Yes. And intimacy and, and love and goodness that like I may or may not be able to experience. Um, and I think the other thing of, of just like behavior and like making the right decisions, I think it just communicates that, that like God cares the most about whether I succeed or fail at, like sexual purity. Like I think just yeah. as a very like foundational, uh, like basic truth, I think the idea of purity culture just communicates that like one of God's biggest concerns right. is whether or not I'm having sex. Right. And I just, it's just not true. Yes. Uh, completely. Like, yes. like as a holistic human being and like a person made in the image of God, like God cares God cares about that. Yeah. Right. But God that cares is, about everything. Yes. <laughs> but that is not like my ability to experience closeness with my creator is not yes. determined solely on my sexuality or the decisions that I make around that. Um, and, and God isn't up there keeping score about like those moments in my behavior yes. monitoring just that part of my life in order yes. to experience yes. goodness. I don't know. I think those are, those are kind of the two things that I feel it communicates about God is like this just extreme behavior control and uh, an idea that he would withhold something good from me Yeah, in, yeah. in my life. Totally. I, th I think it also paints a picture of God 
uh, of a God who is just constantly tempting you no. or just like putting you on trial all the time. Mm, yeah. wow. And then you just have to like bear it, bear it to prove you're faithful. Right. Like just to be like, all right, God, you're putting this in front of me again. And you're putting this person in front of me again, which is like incredibly selfish mm-hmm. uh, to think that, but it's, it's, it becomes all about you yep. and your interactions with people actually become all about you and your interactions mm-hmm. with the other sex and how, and how holy you're being and your obedience to God and how you think of them, yes. look at them, interact with them. And so it makes God somewhat cruel, I think, uh, in the sense of he's just like toying with you yes, and being like, all right, are you going to love me? Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to be obedient? Yes. And I just think that's a picture of God that is like, just not true. Like, I think that's a picture of God that is... Uh, yeah, just cruel, arrogant, mm-hmm. self-seeking, just toying with your emotions to see like if you'll be faithful to it. And I think that that is just like a really harmful ver- vision of yeah. God. Yeah, totally. I know I think there's like a perception um, in the world that the most important thing about Christianity is that you're not supposed to have sex. If you're a Christian, I think that's real. It's almost like, you know, like for those of us that are just like in it every day, that, that kind of like sounds ridiculous, but I think that's true. Mm -hmm. Right. And which is wild. And I just want to like say super explicitly that that is just not true. Like (laughs) that's not true. And I was just talking with someone recently who, um, is sexually active and she was like, and she's been pursuing the Lord and like just figuring out what discipleship looks like for her. And, um, and she said to me with these, these words, and it made me sad. She was like, I mean, I know I'm not like that close to God because I'm having sex, um, with my partner, but blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of broke my heart because Mm -hmm. it felt like she was like, I'm, I'm just counted out of that. There's no way that I can access God in the same way that you can or, or someone else can. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. That's mm. just so not true. And it's, mm. it's, I think scripture like directly opposes that. And we'll probably yeah. get into some of that too. But, um, but that, that impression is out there and it's untrue. Yeah. And I, I think it does another thing too, where it, it creates a God that actually thinks some forms of behavior are worse than others. Mm-hmm. Yes. It creates a hierarchy of, of the, like you were saying, yeah. Molly, it creates a hierarchy of the things God cares about. Right. That exactly. That we do or don't do. And if there were a hierarchy, like that's not the, on the top. top. That is for right. sure. Not like, on I the think top. there are things that we see expressed in scripture yeah. Yeah. where God is like pretty clear. And that is like homelessness, like yes. caring for the homeless. And not that he doesn't talk <laughs> about like, sexuality, but that, I don't know. That's just, yeah, it's, like not that, it's not that it's <laughs> not there, right. but like you want to, if you want to create a hierarchy and you want to do a very basic, like right. s- like survey like look at the amount of times that the bible talks about money right. mm-hmm. yes. like if you want to create a, a yes, hierarchy exactly. based exactly. on quantity yep. mm-hmm. like it will undoubtedly come down Generosity. like the new testament yeah. in particular talks about money and how we leverage money more so than anything yes. yeah. and in the most wealthy country in the world there is a sermon a year in a church given on right. money yes right. yes mm-hmm. and think about the number that we give on Sorry, this is, I'll get on a church culture horse. Sorry, this is my bad. So I think that's one thing it tells us about God that is his, is wonky. The second thing um, that I think it, it, it reinforces is that God views men and women through the lens of the fall rather than through the lens uh, of their redemption. Yes. yes. Right. So, on, so what it does is, is it God that looks at the fallen state of men and women, like the post Genesis two of their separateness, their mm-hmm. differentness, their their the point where they failed each other most, and says, actually, that's the normative behavior. Mm-hmm. That's the way that I just need to mitigate it all. And what what we know because Jesus modeled for us is that is not how God sees men and women. 
He calls them to newness, resurrection, Christ likeness, all together for the for the for the beauty of the oneness of the church. Mm-hmm. That what God is building up in the wake of the resurrection of Jesus is a community of people who are all capable, whether slave or free, male and female, capable of embodying the resurrection life of Jesus enabled by God's spirit. That's what like, so, so in that it, it shows a version of God that just uh, looks like Jesus never happened, which is, freaking wild but like i think that's that's part of it yeah and so i i I don't know i I think that it's that's really important to me to say because i think what we're all noticing i mean obviously we all work in and in and with um, emerging adults young adults that this is a huge conversation that we have frequently with people and what we're seeing is they're like well this that's that's the God. And so like, if that, if purity culture right. tells me that that's who God is like, then I don't want to be part of that God. Mm-hmm. And like, and I think we all would say unequivocally that God doesn't reflect the God of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like that is not, that is not a God that we worship. That is yes. not a God that Christians worship. And yes. so, so you can reject the culture yeah. because right. that version of God is bogus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really important, G, because I think I think that that is maybe one of the most important things about this is that uh, is that our image of God is created through this lens, and that people's image of God is created through this lens, and so it actually doesn't just affect their sexuality; it then affects their entire relationship with God, mm-hmm. because then they have an image of God that isn't actually who He is, mm-hmm. and that's. Yeah. Like that's just as damaging. Yes. Like that is incredibly damaging because then we have people going out and doing ministry and following Jesus who aren't following Jesus. Yes. Like who aren't following the God that is actually portrayed in scripture, right. but are following a culturally created idol. Yes. That isn't God by the church, which by is the, the church. Wildest thing. <laughs> yes. Me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh God, I just get so annoyed. Yes, the church was the very thing that created the idol, which is like, I mean, we've We've seen that over and over again in scripture. Like, uh, (laughs) we've done it. it. (laughs) What old Aaron? Yeah, literally, Aaron. (laughs) Moses comes down, like, what what happened, dude? Aaron's like, oh, they just built a calf. I don't know. I definitely didn't do anything. (laughs) We're still doing that. Wow, we needed some comedic relief. I know. Uh, but I think an important question to ask off that is what, what is the God of the Bible actually like? Like, what do we see in him that, uh, that can, I mean, hopefully point us in a direction that actually upholds what his vision of sexual yes. integrity is, but also just upholds the reality of who he is. Uh, because I think that that's one of the most important things that we can talk about uh, as we talk about purity yeah. culture is all right, we, we can deconstruct that all day long, but what does it mean to like actually look at who yeah. God of God of the Bible actually is? Yeah. And I think that the, the reconstruction starts with asking who is God. Yeah. Right. And I think, so for me, one of the ways that I would answer that Josh is that like, like Jesus is the, like the fullness of the revelation of God, that everything that we need to know of everything that, uh, that we need to know about God need is not the right term because it's everything that is to know about God is revealed in Jesus. That the fullness of the revelation of God was revealed in Jesus. Now we haven't always known that God was like Jesus, but since Jesus came, we do now that there has never been a time where God has not been like Jesus. God has always been exactly like Jesus. So when we start asking that and we look at Jesus's life, we can begin to ask that this is what the life of God can look like if God became a human. Mm-hmm. That So some version of, of the things that Jesus cared about, the things that he did, the way that he treated people, and ultimately um, his movement to the cross and resurrection and then even how he treated people post-resurrection 
reveals to us who God is. And in, in that, we see someone that is self-emptying, that is willing to get into the, the, to the messiness of life with someone, to put their body on the line for people who are, are, are stuck in exploitative situations, particularly sexually exploitative situations. Like there's a woman, uh, in, I think it's John 4, where the woman who's caught in adultery, um, like who's in this, like we don't really know why she was there, but most, like all indications was that she was probably some sort of sex worker. And she's just being leveraged to prove a point. And Jesus moves into the, into the moment with her and defends her. And like every single hierarchical, patriarchal structure that was leveraged for this woman, because like it takes two to tango, where's the dude? But the woman is the one that's thrown in front. He puts his life on the line for her. Like, this is the stuff that we begin to see. Not a, not afraid. Like, I don't want to say, like, like into the mess, into the reality of human, into the into the strangeness and, and multifaceted layer of human sexuality in a broken world. Jesus is there in the midst of it. And I think that's an, an important thing. Um, that we're, at least that, the God of the scriptures is, is yeah. there in the midst of it. Well, and I think, gee, that points out a, a reality that God doesn't turn his back on someone yes. who who uh, the scriptures say was living in sin. Right. And that he doesn't turn his back on her. He enters into it and like cares for her and defends her and loves her. And that's, that's a truth that we see about yes. God in the Bible. That's not just like a, that's not just like a thing. Uh, I'm, I mean, this happens a lot, but that's not a, just a thing to say, like uh, to adapt theology to culture yeah, like that is you. actually yeah. what god does in scripture yeah. uh and he like and he condemns the condemners yes mm -hmm. uh yeah i also think what we see is i'm thinking back to some of the stuff we talked about earlier around the idea of um sort of like we don't have control. I think specifically we talked about this around the narrative of like, of how men were conditioned under purity culture is just like, you don't have control. This is just something you are. This is something you do. And then in an attempt to not make everything sexual, we actually make everything, everything sexual, sexual. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really, it's like the opposite of freedom. It's very right. limiting. It's mm -hmm. very restricting. It's right. just sort of um, a self-fulfilling prophecy saying this is who yeah. you'll become. And I think what we see in scripture is, is the freedom to be image bearers in yes. that way yeah. of like, of, of, Jesus, like that story where he says, go and sin no more yes. at the end. Like yeah. he says, go and live out your God given identity, identity as an yes. image bearer in freedom yes. because you can, because yeah. you have the ability to, because yes. you have the yeah, ability so to good, choose Molly. like to honor the Lord yes. with your body, not because you have to make these decisions in order to follow the rules and get your like Jesus points, but because you have been created in the image of God and you have the ability to walk yeah. in freedom yeah. to honor God. Yes. Jesus went to the mat for you. Yes. And now you are free yes. to go and be. Yes. And that is, I think, reflective mm. of what it looks like to honor God in our sexuality and to live that out is to choose to reflect God's image in the decisions that we make because we are empowered to and because we're free to, not because we've been conditioned to fulfill this like narrative that was spoken over us yeah. in a negative or yeah. a positive way. I think like we've been called to walk in freedom and we're able to, and like we get to live that out. And I yeah. think that's so much more reflective of, of who God is than this restrictive, like yeah. withholding picture of, of God. Yeah. yeah. It made me think of something where you were saying that the version of God, Molly, was that it was, if I, and you can correct me if I say this wrong, is like, is that God withholds his best things. And what it sounds like you're saying is it's like, God is, doesn't withhold his right. best things from you. Yeah. 
right. it's amazing. He frees you unto it. Yes. Right. He frees you unto right. his best, like yeah. and unto the goodness that he desires for yes. you. And you have a choice to say that right. and to yes. and to follow that and yes. to align with that. And I think that is even it's even more profound of a picture of God that he doesn't force his best on you. Yes. It like it's available to you to choose freely. And we have all the freedom in the world to experience it. Yes. But also we get to choose if that is what we believe is best or not. Yes. And yeah. he's like, right. this is available. This is the way to experience life abundantly to the fullest. Yes. It is open for you if yes. you want it. Yes. Yep. Which that is just so profound. It mm-hmm. is. It is. Because what he's saying is, is like, I want to, sh- like, I'm showing you the, the way to eternal life. You are free to choose it, but right. it will result in death. Yep. You know, but choose life. Like, and that that's an old, old, like, way that they talked about it in, in, like, back in Deuteronomy. It was like, they were saying, set before you is life and je- death. The way before you is set life and death. Choose life that you might live. And Jesus was just doing that over and over and over again, saying, choose to live, choose to live choose to live yeah. i know like i know the best ways for you to yeah. live yeah and then well, he showed it he showed that in his life all of it he mm-hmm. showed that that life is full of abundance mm-hmm. yeah and that's available to all of us which is- and and i think the other thing that we see in jesus is he is actually he is actually the model image of 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 a man yes like and i think that's important to point out because how do we see this god treat women how do we see this God interact with men? How do we see this God uh, like act as a man? Yeah, and and embody that. And in Christian in Christian culture and in, and in purity culture, manlyhood is often associated with the world's definition of manlyhood. Yeah. It's still it's still about being strong. It's still about defending. It's still about conquering. It's still about power and authority, power and, authority and leadership yeah. and and uh and sexuality like you are living out your sexuality in a certain way and jesus like freaking does not look like that no, he like doesn't. he i mean he empties his power he's yeah. serving he's he's protecting. protecting he's he's being kind to people he's being intimate with he's people. being intimate he's yeah. yeah he's sharing his feelings mm-hmm. like like he's not withholding that stuff and 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 then with, I mean, with women, he's a God who's like uplifting them yes. and listening to them and empowering them and believing, them believing them. in them. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, man, that's another vision of, of what is God actually like? And I think that that, that's the truth. That's not just us giving a, a more compelling vision to convince you of something like that is the reality of what the scriptures say to be yeah. true about God and what we've yeah. learned to be yes. true about God. And so this is why it's important that if you're wrestling with like purity culture and what the church has portrayed as sexuality to you, and you're like, I don't want to be a part of, a part of that God. Well, we don't either. Yes. Like the God that is in front of you uh, is like the one that we just painted. And I think that's a way more compelling God to you and the God that you should actually consider uh, to follow because yeah, if that's the God that you've been following, I'd throw that out too. Like, like that's not him. Yeah. And I think Josh, what you're just saying there is that the, I think it's Eugene Peterson in a long obedience in the same direction. He he paints this picture of like cattle ranchers or something. (laughs) And he like talks about how like cattle ranchers rarely put up lots of fences and boundaries for people. Rather, what they do is that they dig wells and then teach the cattle or the livestock what it means to drink from a well. Because then mm-hmm. the livestock just don't go far from the source of life. Mm-hmm. And what we, what we did in purity culture is we said, here's a crap ton of boundaries, don't cross them. Rather than teaching people mm-hmm. what it yes. means to draw from the life Good. of God. That's so good, D. You know, so. Slash Eugene Peterson. Yeah, yeah it's maybe, yes. It's maybe Eugene, Eugene. Peterson. It's, <laughs> past Eugene is legit. Uh, truly. Yeah, and we're going to talk about in another episode what it looks like to build a sexual ethic, yeah. which I'm really excited to do with you guys because um, that is an important part right. of this conversation. Right. But um, somewhat in the meantime, I yeah. guess, 
what does it look like for you guys to find rest in the midst of this topic and this conversation? Like we have talked about all the ways that purity culture is really damaging and very yes. insidious and systemic and yes. large ways. And we've talked about what the God of the Bible is actually like and offers. And so how do we find rest in that? Yes. I think just to start like foundationally, if you find yourself struggling and wrestling with this concept of purity culture and, and it feels like a source of contention for you in your faith. And it feels like something that, um, if it, if it feels like the source of, I can't follow Jesus or like, it feels like something that is, is so in the way of your, mm-hmm. um, ability to connect with God. I think just finding rest in the fact that it is not a reflection of who God, God is. is yeah. I think just yeah. like saying that yeah. as truth, that it's a, it's a, it's rooted in a misunderstanding as we've been talking about for the past while, like it's rooted in a misunderstanding of the God of scripture. Yeah. And so I think finding rest in the fact that it's okay to be feeling that contention with, with purity culture and maybe with trauma that you have or with um, like hurt or pain that you've experienced, like that, that doesn't mean uh, that that is associated with, with God, that those things can be separate. Um, and that like, it's, it's just rooted in a misunderstanding and a, a false picture of who God is. Yes. And so find rest in the fact that like it's a broken system yes. and a broken culture yeah. and that it's not reflective of a broken mm-hmm. God, God or yeah, a, right. a broken so thing. good. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. I, I would just, I, yes. I would just do like a, a little asterisk beyond what Molly just said. And it's simply that you can still deconstruct that, t- that culture um, and that God. Yeah. Um, because uh, that God one doesn't exist. And, Two, that culture is damaging and broken. And you know that because the culture that Jesus set up is distinctly different than the one we just Mm -hmm. described. That you can deconstruct that culture with Jesus himself. Yeah. The living God himself. And so it's if you don't like that culture because it has been damaging, because it is damaging, Mm -hmm. that Jesus himself would stand in stark opposition that doesn't mean that god is wrong god is off it just means that humans as we talked about continually do human things and make systems that are imperfect with the best intentions that create oftentimes deep levels of damage Um, which i think actually just goes to show you how little christianity has to do with how good your intentions are but that's Maybe for another, <laughs> uh, my side of the point, but that you can deconstruct all of that mm-hmm. with Jesus Himself, and and you can deconstruct all of it and still follow Jesus. That you don't have to throw all of it out. Yeah. Yes. I think what I would say is that uh, that your sexual life does not define how close you are to God, in the yes. sense of what you have done or haven't done or will do. Uh, that, and as we've said earlier, that what purity culture has done is basically, I was joking earlier, but it's basically a movement of people who got in, who got together and said like, all right, what what is keeping young people from God? Sex, let's eliminate it. And it <laughs> it's like, that feels like what happened is like right. people got together and said, all right, what keeps young, young people away from God? And it's like, all right, they, let's just do everything we can to keep them from having sex versus like helping them know God yeah. uh, and follow him and interact with him. And it's a very similar idea to the, to, the, to the well that Garrett was talking about. And, and so your sexual sexuality like matters to God, yes. but it is not the primary thing that indicates your relationship with, with him. him or, or how yeah. close you are to him or his love for you or your love for him. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so I think it's important to know that and to settle into that and to recognize like, um, that your relationship with him is about your intimacy with him. Yeah. Like, yep. uh, and, and your sin absolutely like, can damage you and other people. But, but I mean, Jesus paid for your sin. Like you are, 
you were able to always be with him and to come near to him and that your sexuality uh, and how you've and the experiences you've, you've had don't define your, your closeness yeah. to be in a relationship with God or your ability to be right. close with him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Contrary to like what purity culture would tell us, whether or not you have had sex or are having sex is not the most important thing about you. That's right. Yeah. And I mean, I think we even see that in the way that Jesus interacted the woman who was, we always say caught in adultery, like exposed in, yes. in an adulterous relationship, relationship that yes. there was also another person in. Um, because he doesn't like talk to her a bunch about it. Yeah. And he says like, go and be free and live your life yes. and live in complete freedom, clean slate. Like he has this really intimate, mm. beautiful, honestly, um, companion esque moment with her where he, he loves on her. Yes. And the most important thing about you is that you were made in the image of God. That's right. I would say, which is a pretty big statement to make, but I think I would say that, that the most important thing about you is that you were made in the image of God and your understanding of that, um, will indicate so much of your flourishing. And so that's the thing to dig into and that's the thing to understand. Yes. And that if you, I think the other thing just Right beyond that, as you were saying that, Ken, it just made me think that if you feel because of your culture, the church culture you've grown up in, you currently are in, and you feel like there is something uniquely shameful or dirty because you've had sex or you haven't been able to control your urges, like, can we just say, like, Jesus thinks that you are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like, there is nothing uniquely wrong with you because of an activity right. that you right. that you went into that God does not have that hierarchy right. that you are beloved mm-hmm. son and daughter of the most high God and that the constructs of human do not change that whatsoever mm-hmm. and so and so so enter I mean and I know that will take like therapy and counseling and you should do that <laughs> um <laughs> But I just need to, like, as as a pastor, as all of us as church workers, I think it's important to say, like, like we're so sorry that the church has done a, a crappy job of telling you who what sex is and what it means to be an image of God, looking to live an integrous like way with your with your with your your sexuality, and what it looks like to do that in a way um, that is fully human, that shows intimacy and all, of that. and we just have done that terribly and so i just want to say sorry we've done a bad job um sorry for the undue amount of of uh pain and burden we've put on women um to bear the brunt of a low view of men that the church has also done a crappy job of and has created massive amounts of pain like in, in real world situations i mean like yeah. like if you, not to go down too large of a tangent but like the the most recent atlanta shootings mm-hmm. is the logical extreme mm. of purity culture mm-hmm. given a rifle yeah, exactly intermittent like like integrated with like mounts of racism yep. yeah. you know so like we are like we understand that that was something we created as the church and, and we don't get to run away from that we don't get yeah. to like not own that mm-hmm. but we do get to say we're sorry and we do get to say lord forgive us yeah. and we do get to say there uh, there is a way forward, and we trust that God is um, able. If we are, uh, if we are, are honest and we confess our sin, that He is righteous and will forgive us for all our sin. So we we confess that we've done a bad job at that, and we want to do better, um, but not because we have it in ourselves, but because we trust that the Holy Spirit is moving us in that direction. So, um, yeah, friends, that's yeah. all. I, I just felt convicted to say yeah. that. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Thanks, G. I think that's the perfect place to end. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you can stay tuned for all of our content.